Well, hello everyone and welcome to The Rock's online service. We are so glad that you're with us today. Many of you know people that could really use some encouragement and a word from the Lord. So make sure to invite them by giving a call or sending a text. Also, as you're about to hear from Pastor Jerry, we'll be giving some important updates with regards to Anaheim Campus Reopen Plan. So make sure to stick around for the whole service so that you don't miss out on that. That's right. And speaking of the service, let's prepare our hearts to receive since it's service time. Well, hello, Jerry and Kimberly Dearman here. Welcome to The Rock's weekend service. You are going to be so glad that you joined us today. Absolutely, you are. And we want to remind you that we think of you often. Mm -hmm. We pray for you. We are contending for all of God's goodness over you. And we sure are looking forward to seeing you face to face very soon. I've got a good word for you today. And don't miss at the beginning of the message, I'm going to give some announcement about the Anaheim campus. So make sure to pay attention to that. Well, as usual, we're going to open up with some worship. Allow this to be from your heart. Come on, let's engage in the things of God. Let's come to the Lord. In fact, I like to even say some prayers from my own heart before I just start singing songs. I like to say, Lord, okay, I worship you. I honor you. And of course, if there's any sin or something to confess, get all of that out of the way. Cast your care over on the Lord and let's come and let's worship the Lord together. We're so glad you've joined us today. Let's worship him together. Your hands of praise. 
I find my rest And without you I fall apart You're the one That guides my heart And Lord, I need you Oh, I need you Every hour I need you My one defense My righteousness Oh God, how I need you Lucidity among us, Lord. We need you, Lord, now more than ever, Lord, your presence as we worship and sing to you, Lord. You're all that we need. Only you can satisfy, Lord. That's why we sing. All I need is you. All I need is you. There's no one like our King, oh yeah. 
to put all of our trust and all of our hope in you because you are greater, Lord. You are greater than anything, Father God, in this world. You are the creator of everything. And so all of our hope and our trust is in you. You are greater, Lord. We exalt you. We make you greater than everything, Lord. We magnify you. And we bless you, God. We love you with all of our hearts. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, amen. God is so Good, and we're so glad to have you all with us today. We're also incredibly excited to announce that some of our smaller in-person gatherings have begun to open up. Praise the Lord. This includes our youth and young adult services. Our high school service will start to meet up in person again on Sunday, July 5th at 6 p.m. Our Jesus sessions, which are for junior high and high schoolers, will start to meet up on Tuesday, July 7th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And the Young Adult Service, which is for ages 18 to 29, will start to gather again on Wednesday, July 8th at 7 p.m., which is so exciting again. You can get all the information you need about these next-gen gatherings, which includes some online alternatives in case anyone doesn't feel comfortable meeting in person. So be sure to follow our next-gen social medias, which are listed right here. For all other information about The Rock, you can stay up to date by visiting our website, go to therock.com. And while you're there, you'll see our coronavirus relief fund. In the past week, we've been able to give out over 10,000 bags of groceries to families in need. In fact, I was driving by on a Saturday and I saw just a huge line of cars out here, people getting groceries. So thank you so much to all of you for your partnership and generosity. If you would like to also partner with us to help get food to people in need, you can do that by visiting gototherock.com and clicking Give to Coronavirus Relief. And lastly, for a list of all of our current online discipleship classes and some even meeting in person, text The Rock to 88202 and click the link. And now let's prepare to give our tithes and offerings. And now as we prepare our heart to bring our tithe and our offering before the Lord today, I want to remind you of a very simple truth, and that is this, that our God is a loving and a giving God. Did you know that? Our God is a very loving God and a very giving God. And there's no better verse in the Bible that I can think of than John 3, 16, a verse that is familiar to so many of us. And it says this, for God so loved the world that he gave. Listen, with the emphasis on the word so, God so loved the world. You see, God's love for this world is so big and it is so great that it motivated him to do something. It motivated him to give. And he didn't just give us any old thing. He gave us the greatest gift that you and I can ever receive. And that is the gift of his son, Jesus. And when we receive Jesus, we receive salvation. Listen, there is no greater gift than you and that you and I can receive than Jesus. It doesn't matter what the need may be financially or materially or whatever the need may be. We need the greatest gift, Jesus. And God loves you so much. He gave us 
his son, Jesus. Well, did you know that once you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, God doesn't stop giving? In fact, it's only the beginning. The Bible says in Romans 8.32 that he, talking about God, who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him, with Jesus, also freely give us all things? What's that mean? When we receive Jesus, God doesn't stop giving. It's only the beginning. You see, with Jesus, God will also freely give me and you all things. You see, God doesn't want to withhold anything from me and for you. In fact, the Bible says in Psalm 84, 11, no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. You see, God is a very loving and he is a very giving God, not wanting to withhold anything but to freely give us all things. Now, what does this have to do with the tithe and the offering? Well, the Bible says this in Philippians 4, verses 15 through 19. It says, Paul writing, Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. See, he's referring to giving. He's referring to the tithe and the offering. He says, for even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Now listen to verse 19. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Notice what the Bible says to those who are giving that those of us who give, he says, and my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. Listen, there is not a need that you have that God does not want to supply. So when you receive Jesus, God doesn't want to withhold anything from us. He wants to freely give us all things. So as you give today, may it be a reminder that we are giving to a very loving and giving God who will supply all of our need according to his riches and glory. So Father, I come to you in Jesus' name and I thank you for every person who is giving today. There are some that may be giving uh, right now, some may be giving later today or later on in the week. But whenever it is that we give, we set our hearts knowing that we are giving to a very loving and a very giving God, that you have sent us Jesus, the greatest gift that we can ever receive. And with Jesus, you will also freely give us all things. So I pray, for every person who is a giver today, that you will supply all of their need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus, and we receive it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. If you're in one of our Rock House churches, please use one of these two giving options. Unless you have a certified house church giving keyword, text the Rock HC to 77977 and click on the link. Or you can visit our website, go to therock.com and click give. If you're not yet a part of a house church, you can continue to give as you always have, either through our website, go to therock.com, or you can text your congregation's code, such as the Rock one for Anaheim English, to 77977. Of course, you can always mail in your offering or hand deliver it to our church offices. Most importantly, we want to say thank you for partnering with us to reach as many people as possible with God's love. Before we receive God's word today, we're going to sing one more song. So right where you are, let's just worship him with all of our hearts today.
Father, we thank you for your holy, written, inspired, living, thank active, you, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword word. And we pray that as we open it today, that by the Holy Spirit, you will speak to yes. each of us. May each of us know what heaven is saying to Amen. us thank in Jesus' God. name. Amen. 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 Well, just before we open up our Bibles, you know, a lot of people have been asking, especially in the Southern California area, hey, when is the Rock Anaheim going to open? And let me tell you, we're excited yes, about this we too. Are. Oh. And it's been so good to see restaurants opening and other businesses Nail opening. Nail salons the mall. opening. Nail salons. <laughs> Didn't think That's about important. that one. But let me tell you, we're not only going to open, but I can honestly announce we're already opening in this way. We're opening with the smaller gatherings. OSL classes are already starting to come back on campus. Young adults, youth, some of the smaller gatherings that are allowed in California, we're already beginning to open those up now, so we're excited about it. And we're only waiting for our, our large services, our large gatherings. And the reason we're waiting is because the state of California is yet to lift the guidelines to allow us to meet with a church our size. But we are hopeful, listen to this, we're hopeful yes. that this is going to happen in July. And so pray with us on this. We are excited. We want to see people face yes. to face. And family we wanna, reunion is it, what it's going to be. It will be a family yeah. reunion. This is going to be a great celebration. Yeah. Will it be different? Yes, it's going to be different. But what do we do? We roll with it. And we come and we worship God. Some of you may wonder, hey, if we started a house church or if we're starting one, how is that going to work with a campus? And let me just tell you, don't worry. It's going to work. As we get close to that, we're going to give very clear instructions. These are going to complement one another. God is teaching us step by step. So just stay with us step by step. And we're going to let you know as soon as we know when we're going to open the campus, we're going to let you know. But I think we're getting very close to that. So thank God for thank that. God. Well, all right, let's open up our Bibles today to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 1, if you turn there, please. And I want to begin reading at the fourth verse. We've been on this brand new series called The Spirit and the Bride. And this is about, it's launched really Pentecost Sunday. This is about the Holy Spirit and the Bride of Christ, who is the church. That's us. That's all the believers here on, on the earth. And so we've been on this series and really paralleling between the Acts chapter 2 Pentecost and this Pentecost here in 2020. The Acts 2 Pentecost was a launch of the church. The Acts or the Pentecost Sunday of 2020, this was a relaunch of the church. And so we, of course, launch many house churches and we're excited about that. But today the Lord wants to take us into something else. We're into now this 40 days of media fast and prayer, 
a media fast and prayer. And the Lord wants to talk to us some more about that. But today he wants to talk about cause and effect. And boy, he really impressed this on my heart that he wanted us to see why. Why has he called us to do this? You know, if you're going to give something up, you want to know why. Why am I giving this up? Why am I sacrificing? God wanted us to look very clearly here in the book of Acts and to see why. Why would he call us to do this? So let's start here in Acts chapter 1 and the fourth verse. And it says here, I'm reading out of the New King James Version. It says, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me. For John the Baptist truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So notice here, after Jesus was raised from the dead, he spent about 40 days teaching them about the kingdom of God. It says right here in this chapter. And then he says to them, he commands them not to depart from Jerusalem. Wait for the Holy Spirit. Wait for the Holy Spirit. You're going to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. Now let's skip down now to the 14th verse. It says, these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. So notice, he commanded them to wait. And here they are, about 120, the Bible says, in this upper room. And they're continuing with one accord. So there's unity there. Not necessarily everybody agreeing on everything, but there's unity. There's a difference between unity and agreement. And it says they were in one accord. They were in unity and in prayer and supplications with the women, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with Jesus' brothers. So Jesus' brothers, they thought he was a lunatic, but something happened now after he'd been raised from the dead. If he was one of the 500 that Jesus appeared to, then you can imagine that this would help them to believe that he really was indeed the Son of God. So we're on this series called The Spirit and the Bride. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, stay in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit comes. Why? Well, you are the bride of Christ. You are the church. You 12 apostles, all these hundreds that still believe in Jesus, you are the church. However, without the Spirit, the church is powerless. We're impotent. We're helpless. We need the power of the Spirit. So Jesus commands us to stay and wait for the Holy Spirit. So what do they do? They stay in prayer. Now, I'm going to go into, maybe next week, I'm going to go into some of the signs of the times. Because I tell you, I love the study of end times. I love teaching on the signs of the times because they're very prevalent. But I'm telling you, there are some things that have happened that have built upon other things in just the recent weeks and months that I think they need to be identified. And Jesus himself said, hey, look, if you can predict the weather by looking at the sky and the atmosphere, and but you can't see the signs of the times, he said, you're hypocrites. Of course, I think he was talking to religious people, people that said they believe in the Bible. But he said, you should be able to read the signs of the times. I want to talk about some of the signs of the times. In other words, as we said, the first Pentecost was clearly in proximity to the first coming of Jesus. But I believe that this second Pentecost that we're paralleling here in 2020 is in close proximity to the second coming of Jesus. Now, how close? We don't know yet. But I want to talk about some signs of the times because if indeed we believe it is close within a short time, let's not even try to qualify that or quantify, I should say that. But if we believe it's in a short period of time, we'll live differently. If you believe it's all probably 200 years away, you may live differently. But if you believed it was in the next number of months or years, uh, then you would live differently. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is speaking to the church in these last days and saying, Jesus is coming soon. And we looked in Revelation where Jesus said, Behold, I come quickly. And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. So we'll, we'll focus on that probably next week because I want you to see this. But I say probably because I want to be talking about and teaching what the Holy Spirit says to teach on. So I don't want to make too, uh, too, some predictions that are too dogmatic or too locked in. I want to be led by the Holy Spirit. So let's get back to this text now. Jesus told them, I want you to wait for the Holy Spirit. 
And so they started waiting in verse 14. Now let's skip down now to chapter 2 and see what happened. It says in chapter 2, verse 4, it says that everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them the ability. Okay, so we're talking about cause and effect, that God calls us to do things and we don't realize, we think that's the end result, but it's really just the cause. And there's going to be a different effect. So he says, wait for the Holy Spirit. Well, the Holy Spirit came in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost. But they didn't realize they're going to start speaking in languages that they had never heard of before, or at least never known. They, they didn't know how to speak those languages, but they did. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, let me give you an example of this. When I was 18 years old, 18, 19, 20, and even 21 years old, I'm telling you, my life was radically changed. But here's what I did. I was so desperate for God. I was so desperate to be changed by God. I sought the Lord with all of my heart. Nobody had to tell me to stop watching television. Nobody had to tell me not to listen to secular music or anything that was bad for me. Oh, no. I knew that my heart hungered so much for God. I spent my hours, my extra time, my free time listening to messages, teachings from the Word, reading God's Word, praying. I was after the heart of God. And my life was so dramatically and so profoundly changed in those years. I can honestly say that uh, all, all these years since, I really believe that the majority of believers, I would say the vast majority of believers, do not have that kind of a life change. My life was not just changed by being born again. My life was dramatically changed by spending an unusual amount of time gorging, if I could say this, bathing in the Word of God, saturating myself night and day, teaching, teaching, and not just any teaching, but teaching from something, people that I would call the two spies that would teach it as if these promises are true. And my life was so dramatically changed. Now, let me just tell you, that was an effect uh, of my life being changed was an effect of being in the Word. But there was another effect that God was after, and that is that there would be countless thousands of other people who would need to be discipled, who would need to go after the Word of God, who would need to set aside the distractions and the television and all that stuff and completely fill themselves with the Word of God and with the Spirit of God. See, this was an effect. That season of my life set the course for my entire life. It set the course for my entire ministry. In fact, by the time Kimberly and I met, I tell you what, she could already tell there's something different about this person. He's unusual. And uh, I'm sure she thought I was very good looking. Yeah. Is yes, that right? Absolutely. Say yes. Honey. Noticed okay. your eyes right away. <laughs> my eyes. Well, hey, at least you got eyes, right? But listen, <laughs> yeah. she could tell there was something coming out of me, the Word of God. Every situation, the word, what does the word say? What does the word say about that? Well, e even your mom mentions when she would tell stories about Jerry, it almost was like she was talking about somebody completely different. Yes. There was such a transformation between what your mom said you were growing up to the man Absolutely. that I met at 21 years old. Absolutely. And see, me spending that kind of time in the word of God, investing into the word of God, ingesting the Word of God in such high quantities, I mean, the effects are still playing out. We're talking about cause and effects. Okay, now watch this. Jesus told them, wait for the promise of the Father. Wait for the Holy Spirit to come. So they did. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. But as you know, it didn't stop there. You come down to the 41st verse. Look at this. Down in verse 45. Let me read this from the God's Word translation. Verse 41 Acts 2.41, those who accepted what Peter said were baptized. That day, about 3,000 people were added to them, to the group. Verse 42, the disciples were devoted to the teachings of the apostles, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. And a feeling of fear came over everyone as many amazing things and miraculous signs happened through the apostles. Now, do you see this? There's a cause and effect. There's the cause of waiting for the promise of the Father being in prayer and in unity, the Holy Spirit coming. But then there's another effect. It's like a ripple effect, a domino effect, if you will. 
And so now we have 3,000 other people on the day of Pentecost that are swept into the kingdom of God and swept into this local church. We're talking about cause and effect. Now, why am I bringing this out? Because the Lord has called us right now to set aside distractions and to focus on the word of God and to focus on prayer, even prayer on our knees. And sometimes we're thinking about the sacrifice, but no, we shouldn't think about the sacrifice. We need to think about the effect. God is after the effect, not just the cause. He wants to see the effect. I remember uh, way back in January of 1999, Kimberly and I took time. We, we invested money. We got on a plane. We flew to another state, and we went to a minister's conference. And this was not a relaxing minister's conference. I'm telling you, from morning until late in the evening, it was session after session, the word, the word, the word, teaching, 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 teaching. And these were long sessions. These were not short sessions. However, we invested and we just stayed there under the word of God for three solid days and nights just to be taught the word. Now we're ministers, but we were investing, see, into this. Well, what happened is on the third day, the second to the last session, on the third day, God spoke and God said, I want you to start a church. And that's the church called The Rock that ended up multiplying into so many campuses, so many congregations, several languages, whose discipleship has now gone into some 25 countries of the world. And I'm telling you, this is what God did with one word. Now, what was the cause? The cause was that we just followed the Lord to go and invest the time and stay in the presence of the Lord and not to tune out, but to press in and to pray and to seek God. And then one word from God just exploded into now countless thousands of people and countless churches that are doing discipleship in a more intense and effective way just because of one word. But see, it was the cause. It was the sacrifice. It was the leaning in to the Lord, knowing that if you lean into the Lord, you're tapping into, I mean, the most, the most potent power in the universe the power of the living God. But this is what God does. So notice this now. We're back in Acts chapter 2. Look at the 46th verse. Acts chapter 2, and come down to verse 46, and here's what it says. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Now, I want you to notice the cause and effect here. The cause is obvious. It says that they were continuing uh, in one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. Notice both levels, the temple, house to house. Let me say it a different way, a campus, but also uh, a home. And so he says, both were happening. They ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God, having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily. Now we don't just have people get, getting saved weekly. We have people getting saved every day, every day, every day. What is this? This is a cause, and it's also an effect. So back in verse 42, they were devoted to the apostles' teaching, fellowship, breaking of bread, prayers. But as you go down the line, you begin to see every day people are getting saved. This is what God wants to do through us. He wants to bring us to the point where we're investing into his kingdom to the point that almost effortlessly people are coming to the Lord every day. People are being added to the body of Christ every single day, every single day. I remember back in 19, excuse me, 19, 2004, wasn't that long ago, 2004, we had started the church, we're four years into this, and we're actually pushing up to in the 900s back in that point. And I remember the Lord spoke to me and he said, I want you to start over, start over. Well, we had started over years ago and we, when we started the church in 2000, but I knew the Lord spoke, so I continued to seek him and pray. And here's, here's what the Lord said. The Lord said, start over, cancel every ministry with the exception of a few ministries. All the other ministries, cancel them and ask those leaders to get into this new discipleship system called OSL. Oh, I was nervous to do it, but at the direction of the Lord, I did it. Guess what? None of those leaders left. As far as I can tell, none of the people that were in those ministries left, and they jumped into OSL. Well, what happened? Here's what happened. Discipleship exploded at the rock. 
and not only at the rock, but it began to spread all over. And our numerical growth went through another significant surge at the rock. See, I didn't know that you could do something to prune, to pare down, to take away, and the power of God could cause it to flourish even more. I didn't know that. I had to trust God. But notice the cause and the effect. And so now we see that that's the time that OSL, Operation Solid Lives, really gripped the rock. And it spread and it began to flourish. People started coming because they heard about the discipleship, the life change, the deliverances from drugs and alcohol and bondages and such, marriages being restored. They began to hear about the results and that's why they came. See, I didn't know the effect. God just told me what to do with the cause. And this is what the Lord is saying to us. He's saying, I'm telling you what to do. Do it. Trust me. Make the sacrifice. Now, in Acts chapter 3, I won't even take the time to read this, but you know the story. Peter and John were going to the temple at the ninth hour, the hour of prayer, three in the afternoon. And there was a lame man there that was begging. And Peter ends up saying, hey, silver and gold I don't have, but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. Now watch this. They're going to prayer. They're, they're going into prayer. They didn't even make it into prayer. And somebody got healed. Well, the result was, in fact, if you come down here to chapter 4, verse 4, it says, Many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to be about 5,000, just the men. Now, 3,000 were added the first day, but just the men came to be about 5,000 by the time you get to chapter 4. But notice, Peter and John are going to prayer. What's happening? They're continuing to press in to the things of God, continuing to press into prayer, and the gospel is exploding. Discipleship is exploding. Miracles are exploding. Are you catching this? See, God is calling us to do it, and your flesh is like my flesh, and saying, why do we need to do this? I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference. Well, and if you believe that, then it won't. But if you'll follow with us, the Holy Spirit, and maybe you haven't been doing it to this point, I'm telling you, jump onto this with us. This is going to go through the end of July, the end of July 2020, and then we'll be done with this 40 days of a media fast. Jump on here with us. Set those distractions aside and begin to fill yourself with extra prayer, prayer on your knees, extra time in the Word of God, extra time listening, and watch what happens. We're about to go through another major effect because of the cause that the Lord is leading us into right now. Well, let's look at the sixth chapter quickly. In Acts chapter 6, the third verse, the 12 apostles said this, Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business, but we will give ourselves continually, notice, to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And verse 7 says, Then the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. Well, it looked to me like it was already multiplying greatly, but they said, no, when this happened, then it really multiplied greatly. The number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests, talking about Jewish priests, were obedient to the faith. What do we see? We see the cause that we're going to give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word, and we see the effect that the number of the disciples multiplied greatly. There was another explosion of the move of God, the power of God, people becoming disciples of the Lord and being added to the church. Well, thank God for that. Well, now the Lord is saying, this is what I'm going to do with you. I'm going to do a mighty, mighty work through you, but I need your attention. I need you to press into me. I need you to pray. I need you to spend time in the Word. And by the way, if you're thinking that the breakthrough is only with the ministry, then no, you're wrong. These breakthroughs happen at every level. They happen in your own life. If you're married, they'll happen in your marriage. If you're working a job as an employee, they'll have, there'll be breakthroughs in your employment. If you're the owner of the business or the manager, the boss somehow, then there'll be breakthroughs in your ability to manage them and the results that you get. Let me tell you, when the power of God moves, it has no limits. It just moves. It moves beyond every barrier. It just moves from layer to layer 
the power of God flows freely like, like water. And I remember David uh, said after a battle, he said, the Lord has broken through my enemies before me like a breakthrough of water, like a dam giving, giving way. You can't stop that. You can't stop it. And he said, that's the way the power of God has given me the victory. And this is what the Lord is saying to us. So God is speaking in this day. And uh, I am reminiscent of the fact that we have been through these waves where the Lord calls us to do something like this. And then we see the results. And let me just declare, we are going to see dramatic results. But I also want to prophesy you in your life are going to see dramatic results. And you should go into this. If you haven't already jumped on this horse with us, jump on this horse and begin to set aside the media and distractions and such. I know it's tempting because there's so much going on day to day. However, our God, the living God and the Lord Jesus Christ has called us to focus on him and to set those things aside and to embrace what he's saying. So the Lord's called us to the 40 days of a media fast and prayer prayer on our knees. And we said at least 15 minutes to pray on your knees. There's something, something about the posture of prayer, something about that posture. And by the way, uh, we have that document on our website. If you go to the website, we have the document that shows you how we're doing this fast, gives you some more instruction. And then we're spending extra time in God's word, all of us ourselves. And Kimberly, by the way, encouraged us last week to make sure to include children in this. Mm -hmm. Oh, let yeah. me tell you, it, it makes an impact, doesn't it? It does. And you know what? I'm learning so much by just with our granddaughter, four years old. Mm. She comes upstairs in the morning. She sees me reading my <laughs> Bible. But she's asked several times when she's come up, she goes, can I read it with you? And uh, I, it's just an awareness. Children naturally have a hunger for God. They and do. so we need to fan that yes, in their lives do. and engage them in this time of not only reading the word, but also in praying. Yes. And their prayers are precious and they're powerful because <laughs> they pray with such purity and yes, they faith. Do. Yes, they do. And that's absolutely the truth. And who knows what callings right. are on these children's lives. That's right. And so the Lord's called us to fast media and the Lord's called us to spend extra time in God's word and in mm -hmm. prayer. But the Lord's also called us to embrace our ministries. There are people around us. And the more society opens back up, there are more people that we're going to be around. Yes. And God has called us to embrace our ministries. Let me remind you of Colossians 4.17. And this is where the Bible says, And say to Archippus, just put your name in there. Say to Jerry, say to Kimberly, say to you. Be sure to carry out the ministry the Lord gave you. Be sure. Notice he's talking to a particular person. I love this. Say to Archibus, be sure to carry out the ministry that God gave you. And the Lord's saying that to you and me today. Yes. Listen, everybody's called to do something, but be sure yeah. to carry out the ministry that God gave you. And that could be any number of things. But I want to make an appeal for those of you that the Lord has stirred your heart, or maybe he's doing it now, to open up a house church. I know by the Spirit of God that this is something God is saying, and I believe it's going to go on for a good long time, maybe until Jesus mm -hmm. comes. I can't say for sure, but I, that's my sense. My sense is this is the, going to be the new normal. Not that we won't have campuses uh, of churches. Thank God I believe we will. But I believe by the Spirit of God that we're going to see house churches yes. flourish, flourish. And God's going to have a whole movement of house churches. And so I am so glad that we answered the call of God mm -hmm. when he spoke to us to start our church. Yeah. We had no guarantees. Mm -hmm. We had nobody that said, I'll give you money. Mm -hmm. I'll sponsor you. Mm. Well, I have a house for you. We'll help your family move. I'm not saying that people would not have done it had we asked, because I do believe that people loved us and would have helped us and such. And we did have people end up helping us, uh, family members that allowed us to stay with them and so on. We had, we had those mm -hmm. kinds of things, yeah. but we had no sponsors. We never asked for sponsors. The Lord just said, do it. But looking back today, let me tell you, only God can measure the impact on people's lives just by us saying, yes, Lord, I'll do it. And it was a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. We moved, we gave things up, and we came down, and we, we had a home that we owned. We sold that. 
We came down, we rented, went through years of renting and such because we knew God wanted to do something. And let me tell you, in your life, God wants to do something. There is a cause and there is an effect. And the Lord is calling us right now to do what will be the cause. The cause is never as exciting as the effect. But oh, let me tell you, no one gets to the effect of the power of God being released and change and, and regrets the cause. The sacrifice yes. is worth it. Yeah. Like a woman going through the labor and how intense and difficult, challenging, and even painful that can be. And yet, when that precious baby is born, no woman regrets going through that because that life has come into the world and so precious yeah. and so uh, beautiful so innocent and such. And all of a sudden, all of that melts away. And this right now, this fighting of the flesh, this giving place to the Spirit mm -hmm. and saying, I'm not going to do what I want to do. I'm going to do what God called me to do because God has a plan for my life. Yeah. God is wanting to do something. God is wanting to speak in these last yeah. days. And I, I just want to emphasize, because you brought up that doing something like this is not just for the sake of ministry yes. and even salvations and so forth but this is for your family this is for your it generation is. as you were talking about cause and effect i was thinking about my 19 year old grandmother mm. I've said this so often wow. 19 years old mm. because she felt a call to go to a foreign country she left everything yes, behind uh, to a language she didn't speak to a, a place she'd never been and her decisions through her lifetime Three, you know, two generations later, here I am, because a 19-year-old said yes That's right. to what Jesus was asking of her. And so oftentimes we don't realize that what God calls us to is not just even for what we think of the calling That's or right. what people, how many people will reach, but how will you saying yes to Jesus affect your children and your children's children? <laughs> There is so much more at stake, and it is worth all the sacrifices needed to make. It, it to absolutely made. is. And I know that God has spoken to me and said, raise up pastors, raise up worship leaders, raise up next-gen uh, next ministers, raise up missionaries, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so that's why you're hearing about the BFAM Training Center opening up. Because yes, there are people that are launching house churches and ministry, doing ministry. Thank God for it. Yeah. But many are called to go to that next level of training. And we've got some tremendous lead pro yeah. professors. I'm telling you, I put them against anybody in the world, really. And uh, I, I know for a fact that people are going to come and soak up Yes. The insight, the knowledge, the Spirit of God is breathing. Folks, we're in a move of God. That's the bottom line. There's no doubt about it. We are in a move of God. We're in a flow of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Only God could put all these pieces together. And listen, don't be left out of this. Be right on target with yeah. what God is saying to you. You may say, well, I've got concerns about finances and so on. And let me tell you, those are valid responsibilities and concerns that you have to have and pray over. But God always knows what to do. Mm -hmm. So the Lord will never tell you to do something and forget right. to tell you to do something else. When He tells you to do something, He's considered everything. He never forgets anything except when we repent of our sins. Mm -hmm. He chooses to forgive, yeah. forget our sins. He said, I won't remember those. But he doesn't just forget, he chooses not to remember. So he never remembers anymore. But let me tell you, God always knows what to do. Follow the Lord. Do you remember the scripture? In fact, Kimberly mm -hmm. quotes it so often. Mm -hmm. Tell me what it is. Matthew 6, 33. <laughs> <laughs> I knew yeah. you'd know what I was going to yeah. say. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. I want us to pray right now. And I want us to come before the Lord. In fact, maybe even put your things down. And those of you that are in a house church, this would be a great time for you guys to come before the Lord and, and to yield yourself before the Lord and then to share with one another what the Lord is saying to you. Because who knows, even in a house church, how many house churches are represented in that house church. Maybe not for next week, but in the not too distant future. Who knows what yeah. the Lord is saying. And so let's come before the Lord right now. And those of you that 
need to make Jesus the Lord of your life and you know who you are. <laughs> you are not born again. You are not one with God right now. But God wants to forgive yes. you. He wants to wash you. He yes. wants to make you his child. And so, in fact, let's pray right now. Those of you that fit that bill and you know you do, just, just say this. Say, Father God. I come to you in Jesus' name. I come to you in Jesus' name. I believe Jesus died on the cross. I believe Jesus died on the cross. I believe he paid for the sins of the world. I believe he paid for the sins of the world. I believe he was raised from the dead. I believe he was raised from the dead. And I ask you now to forgive my sins. And I ask you now to forgive my sins. I put my faith in the Lord Jesus. I put my faith in the Lord Jesus. And I commit my life. And I commit my life. To serve him. To serve him. And his purpose and his purposes change me lord change me lord make me a part of your family make me a part of your family from this day forward from this day forward in jesus name in jesus name and father i pray for everyone who is with us today hearing your voice lord you are speaking pointedly and you are calling them to a cause that will yield yes. an effect lord i pray that you embolden them by the holy spirit it's easy for us to talk, but Lord, strengthen us strengthen by your spirit now your spirit. that we may walk this out, that we may be the people that you've called us to be. And Lord, I thank you that this move of God will be unstoppable. unstoppable. <laughs> it will not be hindered. It cannot be altered. Lord, you will flow with your power thank and you, you will change lives dramatically. And I pray in Jesus' name that Every house church that you have ordained to launch will be launched. I declare there will be a clearing. Lord, go yes. before them and make the crooked places Thank straight. You. Lord, connect people that have homes with people that want to lead a house church. Connect them. Lord, cause things to happen so that the ministry flourishes. And Lord, we pray that you'd lead us in knowing how campuses and house churches flow together because we see in the Bible that they do lead us in all of this. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm excited to be in a move of God. I don't just want to be a part of a ministry or a church. I want to be in the middle of the flow of the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you, the Holy Spirit is moving us, the bride carrying us along saying, come on, I'm yes. moving you into position. I'm getting you into the place where God wants you to be so God's work can be done and so that we can fulfill our respective ministry assignments. It's pretty exciting, it isn't is it? It is awesome. <laughs> Praise God. Well, we've enjoyed being with you today and we pray that you continue with us every single week. Open your heart to what God is doing. God is ministering. And by the way, I should tell you and remind you that every day, we're going live stream in the morning between 7 and 8 a.m. Pacific time and then posting on my YouTube channel daily messages that go along with these 40 days of fasting and prayer. So you can go catch up if you want to or you can just uh, start right where we are now today. But listen, stay with us in this. Let's lean into this. Let's sacrifice. Let's pray and let's watch God yes. do his work. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It has been such a privilege to have you. As Pastor Jerry mentioned, we're hopeful to start gathering again in person for our weekend services sometime in July, which is so exciting. That's right, but you don't have to wait for that to get teachings from the Word. So make sure to keep up with the new online content that we have, which includes daily videos from Pastors Jerry and Kimberly by following our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Jerry Dearman and our Facebook page at facebook.com slash go to the rock. As always, if you have a testimony, you can send it to testimonies at solidlives.com. And lastly, if you would like a list of all of our current discipleship classes, make sure to text The Rock to 88202 and click on the link. Other than that, thank you again for joining us. We love you. We look forward to gathering in person soon. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.